Okay, so before I get cooked, I need you guys to know that I took the time to watch this video and research the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's, just in case it would have changed my mind. It didn't, but shout out to Krog's YouTube channel. It was a very informative video, and I just wanted you guys to know the lengths I go through for the integrity of this channel. No, no, actually, wait. Before I get the comments like, wow, only a 10 minute lore video, that's nothing, this lore is deeper than Tolkien, you don't know anything, you're a wanker, you're a loser, your wife has a boyfriend she doesn't hide anymore, it's not my job to do a finals cram session before I go watch a video game adaptation. I mean, imagine. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, Five Nights at Freddy's is probably one of the most popular video game adaptations we can receive right now. And while I haven't played the video game, which should be relatively obvious by now, I will say even though the movie is coming to Peacock, so you don't really even have to leave the comfort of your own couch, good for you, bad for your girlfriend's new boyfriend, I would say going to the theaters on a weekend to watch this with Freddy's fans, or even if you have a couple of friends like that of your own, will more than likely enhance the fun and experience overall. But with that being said, let me start off by saying Five Nights at Freddy's is boring for a noob such as myself. I kind of set myself up for that, but let me explain. Five Nights at Freddy's is an example of one of the purest forms of fan service that I can really remember. Remember Anakin? Ah, uh, fuck off, Ahsoka. Even from watching the trailer a couple months ago and talking about it with my friends, it was a movie that as time went on, became more and more obvious that if you were a fan of the franchise, a fan of the games, a scholar of the lore, then this was a movie for you. Which is pretty dope and it sounds like you guys got a pretty awesome adaptation in a world where that's not really the majority case. Ask Lord of the Rings, The Witcher, Scooby-Doo, 90s Disney's movies or MCU fans how good they're eating. But unfortunately, as for the normies, it's kind of unlucky mate. We kind of got a mixed bag on this one. Not mid, but an ambitious, character driven, but poorly paced movie riddled with lackluster scares that make The Nun 2 look like an Oscar nominee. But that's enough about my own opinion. Let's break down. If there's one thing this movie does do to you, not to compare trauma, but it does make you realize that you can always be more down bad. Look at Josh Hutcherson's Mike, for example, a guy so deep in the sunken place and currently in the middle of a family custody battle over his kid's sister. Yeah, pretty bad. An unfortunate situation for sure. Where are the parents? Mom died and dad couldn't handle it, so he decided to fuck off. Why did this all happen? Well... The bad luck in the slope and descent started back when Mike was a kid, and after witnessing his brother get kidnapped, feels responsible for what happened and feels the need to find the man that broke his family. Using the aid of sleeping- Wait, can I say that on YouTube? Here, using the aid of sleeping beans every night to slip into a kind of three-eyed raven dream state, constantly on the search and pretty much playing detective in order to find clues leading to the perp in the present and maybe change the past? I don't know. It's not really explained. It's like genjutsu. Anyway, let's talk about Freddy and his happy friends. Okay, so to speed this all up, due to Mike's PTSD or something, he lands a last-ditch opportunity for a security gig at Freddy's Fast Bears, a Chuck E. Cheese type for the Americans watching and well I've only lived here I don't know what's going on outside I don't touch grass but that's when the shenanigans really kick off leading to a climax with betrayals plot twists revelations character growth some mid to good horror sequences PG-13 fodder and fan service a good time for sure so let's talk Okay, so in my opinion, what made the movie, um, 
kind of worked, or at least what the movie had going for it, were the characters of Mike and Abby, and the close character dynamic and relationship that they shared. Mike is one of those types that borders on the line of being in a shitty situation or being a shitty person. We all know one or two of those people, and we might even be that person ourselves from time to time. So he comes off as very relatable, and you find yourself rooting for his character to survive against Freddy and his happy friends. Abby is a strong addition as well. For a noob such as myself, Abby came across as the closest rendition of the game that we were going to get. The core aspect of what the game is really going for, the sneaking around jump scare style. And from Abby's POV, especially in the third act, it was definitely a highlight of the film overall. But diving away from the character side of things, the animation and practical effects were pretty incredible. Everything from the movement of the animatronics to their eyes, their appearance, how the kids and the voodoo magic fit into everything. The entire concept within itself is creepy. And on a PG-13 budget and rating, you can tell the crew definitely put their heart and soul into this project and had a fun time doing it. And that type of love can't help but find its way on screen. But it's not like it was all fun. Alright, so let's just get the elephant out of the room. I might be in the minority. I don't know. I haven't watched other people's reviews yet. Five Nights at Freddy's, though, is just so, so boring. How dare you! Much like old or Jupiter Ascending, 65, Annabelle, Transformers The Last Night, I can go on and on. The biggest fuck up that you can truly achieve as a movie, as a film, as cinema, is be boring. It's called entertainment, escapism. And much like those movies I mentioned before, it doesn't matter how hard you strive, how hard you try to achieve your movie to be action-packed, or scary, or plot-twisty, or an overwhelming CGI robot fuckfest. If your movie is boring, then it doesn't achieve anything. I don't like to say whether or not a movie fails or succeeds simply based on the rating. The director has a vision, and when people think rating, they immediately think blood and gore and that whole aspect of the horror genre. And while, yes, that is an aspect that this movie would have definitely benefited from, but there are more ways to incite fear into your audience. And unfortunately, the atmosphere of Five Nights at Freddy's just wasn't there for me. The tone is all over the place with Abby in one scene playing with Freddy and friends. In the next scene, they're dispatching fodder off screen of course. It just doesn't make sense. The movie had the creepy factor in the animatronics themselves, but it's the execution here. There's a skill issue. There was maybe like one jump scare. I feel like the movie was going for more, but I don't know. Oh, unfortunately I just learned from my friend that this was a video game that was made for tweens to basically gateway themselves into the horror genre and that's what this movie was going for, so I feel like an idiot. My bad. At the end of the day, Five Nights at Freddy's is a perfect movie to stay at home and watch on Peacock. Disregard what I said earlier, this is a classic fanfic of lore-filled classic horror game, and if enough diehards continue to go and watch this... Holy shit. Alright, disregard everything I said. Congratulations, Five Nights at Freddy's is a good movie. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Man, I did not mean to talk about this movie for so long, but my god, it did so well in its opening weekend. What a surprise. Oh, go check out my last video. It kind of got lost in the One Piece madness that came out before, but it's slander, of course, of the gourmet variety. With Hollywood's favorite darling and occasional annoying smoke detector, Rachel Zegler, and the MCU's pride and emotionless plank Brie Larson in the Marvels. That's like 
in two weeks now. Man, that's crazy. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.